So welcome back to the Pulsog podcast, and this is our third screencast, going back this time again to the Citizenship Project and hoping to help you maximise your marks in Section B. And we're going to try and identify some common mistakes and pitfalls within this section. Uh, but the good news about this section is it's probably the most straightforward in terms of writing it up. There are certain key ideas that you should be focusing on and areas to avoid. So let's dive straight in. So this is very wordy, but I want to just give a quick overview so that if you don't watch the rest of this video, you'll have at least something to take away uh, of some of the key mistakes that people have been making in what I've looked at when I've looked at large numbers of projects. So the first thing there is that the summary of actions, the first part of your section B, often includes too much discussion of the, the later parts of your research. In other words, you're still going through the research uh, t t telling the examiner rather about the research that you've undertaken rather than focusing straight in on the action. The second point there is that the evaluation uh, is written uh, for the whole project not just for the action plan. You should be focusing in in the second part on just looking at how well the actions went not on the overall uh, on the overall project. The third part there, the outcomes, sometimes they are too vague. You know, you're not really saying exactly what you think the outcomes were. Or sometimes people overstate the impact of what's carried out. And that be might, might be like people saying, you know, they feel like they've had a massive impact on a certain area. Or that, they, you know, they've fixed homelessness in their town. Or, cure, you know, cured some kind of disease. Or, um, you know, fixed climate change. These things aren't realistic and you sound like a bit of a fool if you overstate the impact of what you do. So always try to be a little bit modest in what you're doing. The second part of the outcomes that people make big mistakes in is that they don't attempt to quantify the result. And this seems like a problem here, but it's actually a problem in your overall design and poor planning in section A. You should be trying to build in something in what you do in your overall plan that aims to have to gather some kind of outcome. Now, if you're writing a letter, are you getting a reply? If you're mediating a discussion, are you getting feedback? And how are you measuring that? A lot of my students have tended to have input and output questions so that they'll ask for a certain set of ideas or uh, points from students when they start dealing with them. And then at the end of a class, if they're presenting, they might say, how has your opinion changed? And this gives you at least something to talk about in your outcomes. So plan for success in the outcomes in section A. Um, one of the major problems that, that you see in the section B is that students identify their failures, but they don't see that those failures can be a net positive. In other words, so long as they explain why they failed, it can actually be look really good, you know, Every PhD project, every government project doesn't succeed. Every, you know, international cooperation doesn't succeed. Every global disaster relief doesn't succeed. So why should you expect everything that you do to succeed? But the problem is, is that people say it didn't work, but then don't dig into why it didn't work. And this kind of reflection, looking back at your strengths and weaknesses of your project, is actually, to my mind at least, one of the core things that you should be trying to focus on in your project. And remember, you don't have to be super complicated. The last point there, you don't have to have multiple different strands and layers to what you're doing. Here's what the SEC Chief Examiner's Report said. Some of the best reports were based on actions that were simple, yet clear and effective in nature. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Do something simple and straightforward and explain it in a simple and straightforward manner. You don't need to have elaborate language here. You don't be, need to be a leaving cert. Uh, honours English candidate who's going to get a H1 to write a good report. Reports can be straightforward, factual um, matters. As always, when we're doing our Section B, we have to go back to the Bible. We have to go back to what it says they want us to do in the Citizenship Project booklet. So we go here and we look on page 3 and we I've just taken a screenshot of this section uh, the Section B stuff on, on that area, and you'll see that there is one piece of very conflicting advice here which drives me up the wall, but it's this. 45 marks going for maximum 900 words approximately. Now, maximum and approximately are two self-contradicting phrases. If you are uploading these things and you are 
trying to make sure you have a, if there is a limit on the booklet you have to make sure it's 900 words normally in academic writing you get plus or minus 10 percent is considered fine but we have yet to see how this pans out with the uh, the uploading of projects through uh, through the digital portal so you might need to come back and reevaluate that but i think it's a good sign of a good of a well edited project that you stick to the number count if you're asked for 900 words you write 900 words or 899 as i ask my students to do then you don't have to worry about editing things out at the last minute i'm a big fan of subheadings uh, in these sections to make it easier for the examiners to give you the marks um, and the three subheadings should be the summary of the actions undertaken your critical analysis and your outcomes now i just i don't think you should to just have those subheadings so that you are making it easier for the examiners. The examiners aren't allowed to give you marks if you put them in the wrong section of the project. So if you have something in your section B that should be in section A, they cannot give you the marks no matter how well it's done. So bear that in mind. It's very frustrating to read something when you're correcting and say, oh, that's brilliant, but it's just in the wrong place. It won't get any marks. You don't want to fail on that level. And as with all things leaving cert, we have to bear in mind what can we learn from the marking scheme? Now, bearing in mind that the marking scheme could change, I don't think it will, but it could, we're going to use this with a with a little pinch of salt. As with all things in politics, we realise that we have a very small sample size, only two sets of exams to go on, therefore we can't make any massive sweeping statements. So what do we see here? We see that there's 45 marks, which is the lion's share of your project. We also see that it's, in the previous section we saw, it's 900 words, and each of those sections gets 15 marks equally. So, in theory, you should be writing 300 words for each section. In reality, you might need to borrow a few words from the later two sections for your, uh, for your summary of actions undertaken, if that is a, a more elaborate project. Uh, but try not to go much beyond 330 or 340 words in each section, uh, bearing in mind you'll have to pay them back later. Because it's consistent marking across all three sections, you'll need to be consistent in how you approach them. Again, any of the material that I talk about in this video, you can download from pulsockpodcast.com, the section that's highlighted there on screen, the, the section B handout, and you'll be able to see and read that in your own time, or you can just pause the video as you go along. There are some additional comments on the handout that might be worthwhile for you to, to dip into. So here is a, an action from a summary of actions from a project from one of my students. Now, unlike when I talked about section A, I, in section A, I gave you a perfect uh, 35 out of 35 project. That's not what I'm doing here. Here I'm giving you a project that ended up being about a H2. And I'm trying to go, I'm going to try and point out some of the things that I thought were very good about them and some of the ways in which we could improve it. So there's no reason not to be getting 15 out of 15, if at all possible, in these areas. So what are the areas of improvement? So I'll, you should pause the video now, have a quick read through this or download it on the handout and read it through it might be easier and then you'll be able to understand some of the comments I'm going to make once you've unpaused the video here are some of the things that I think are good about this section generally speaking there's a good logical and even chronological progression in terms of what the candidate is describing sometimes people jump around a little bit and they you know they don't it doesn't f uh, flow uh, neatly and, and logically and that confuses the examiner when they're coming to market you'll also see i've underlined in red here all the verbs all the activities that the student actually did and the point here is to say i did this i did that a good english student will tell you that you should be trying to vary your language so it doesn't get too dull to read but generally speaking keep it as simple as possible so there are lots of positive areas here as well where the student is clearly linking to what they've been asked to do. So the question you, we might ask ourselves is why is this only getting 12 out of 15 marks? Well, one of the big problems we said in section A is that people focus too much on the research and not enough on the action. And this is what this student has done. About the first third or half of this project, of this uh, summary of actions rather, is basically dedicated to here's the... the um, Here's the research that I did. Now, when you're drafting a submission, as this project asked you to do, there is some grounds to argue that maybe research is a part of that drafting process, but stick as closely as you can to 
to the action all the way through. Obviously, this will vary from project to project, but don't get too bogged down in research. I think this is one of the areas they're looking to, uh, looking to ping you on, so to speak. The second half is well written, but it, it had lots of areas that could have been expanded more. So this student was drafting a submission, that was her action. Uh, you know, did she look up similar uh, submissions that she was going to draft? If you're doing an audit, have you looked up how audits are written? Have you researched the template? Did you find a suitable template? You know, how many drafts of this did you complete? Where did you get your feedback from? And some of these things are important because you're going to need to talk about your your feedback in section C. So you should be laying the groundwork for that here. You know, she had to send in a submission. Did she decide to do it by email or letter or both, you know, hard copy or both? And why was that what was that the case? Also, one thing that doesn't happen here is that the student doesn't talk about what happened immediately after the action. So, you know, you, this it, this ends with, you know, I asked a couple of people in my class if we could swap each other's work and correct it. So this is setting up good uh, background for the peer review section later for the feedback, and that's great. But she doesn't lay out the groundwork for her research. So I jotted this down in the research in my research journal, bearing in mind some of the comments I had received from my teacher or some of the feedback that I received from other students. So she should be highlighting how she engaged with her research journal throughout this as something that will strengthen, I think, this section. The second part of your project, the second 15 marks in your section B, is your critical evaluation of the action plan. And I want to just highlight what it is that the chief examiner has said about this idea of critical evaluation, because it's really, really important. The critic, they said, conversely, many candidates did not demonstrate the capacity to reflect upon, analyse or evaluate their projects. So this is something that they've tagged as being a big problem. Some candidates describe disappointing experiences in trying to achieve those, action, those proposed action plans, as you might well in your own time. But they did not seem aware that these experiences can be reported as valid learning. So failed actions are valid learning not just in the reflections, but in the analysis of the project. So if it didn't go well, that's okay, so long as you explain why you think it didn't go well and what you can learn from that. So the basic idea here is that we we don't learn from failure, we learn from reflecting on failure. And if you can explain that within your project, that's really what they're looking for. Again, here's an example of a worked example, and this got 13 out of 15. Take a second, pause it uh, and see where you think we could address this and get it up those extra two marks up to 15. Once you've unpaused the video, uh, we might jot in, jump into some of the ways that we could structure this evaluation. They specifically ask in the Bible, in the page three of our project uh, report booklet, they say, you know, you, mu you should be aiming to talk about the challenges that you came. So I'm going to suggest that we can do this in a few different ways. And we don't need to be as overt. These aren't sentences you have to write. You can, of course, paraphrase them, write them in your own way. But, you know, if you're struggling with some of this, here's one suggested way to do it. One challenge I faced was... I overcame this challenge by. In other words, you're saying this was a problem. Ideally, this could have been flagged in your description of the action that you took, the summary of the actions. And you overcame it by doing something. So did you seek outside help? Did you just need to think more on the problem? Did uh, one of your classmates come up with a solution? Did one of your group mates come up with a solution? The second thing here is that you're not going to overcome everything every time. So another challenge that I faced was, and I partially overcame this problem. So, you know, if you are having diff technical difficulties when you're doing your presentation, for example, you know, you weren't able to get the screen perfectly focused, but it was close enough. And so partly overcoming things is, is, uh, is important. Better half a loaf than no bread. And being realistic, and I think this is important, one challenge that I failed to address fully was this was unsurmount insurmountable rather because, and that's important, that you're not going to be able to fix everything, particularly if you're doing a project on your own uh, or sometimes your, your fellow uh, group members rather could be uh, one of the hindrances. And that's okay to say that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily show to them uh, in your final draft, but it's okay. Be realistic uh, and tell the truth. But I think one thing that people miss out on evaluation is that it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom. One really important way of learning from experience is say, this went well. Why did this thing go well and something else different? So you could have a phrase along the lines of one aspect of the project that I was particularly proud of or that went particularly well or was completely successful was 
I and explain what it was and then I feel this was so successful because you know I was well prepared I had done multiple drafts I had practiced my speech in front of the mirror I got feedback on my draft and I had I felt I was comfortable with the topic and I had the skills necessary so if you're structuring it in that way you can learn from the positives and the negatives and I think this is something that I would certainly want my students to be doing in their projects the third part on this is the outcomes uh, and again 15 marks approximately 300 words although you might not fill this one section and you could lend those words elsewhere again pause this and have a quick read to see uh, where this could be brought up from the 13 to the 15 again obviously these are still very good but we can polish them a little when you've unpaused the uh, unpaused the video let's see what some of these things can be it can be hard to uh, have tangible outcomes and as I said earlier on this can be a problem that you didn't plan outcomes into what you were doing okay if it's 15 marks for this section it they might well be looking for three times five marks we don't know exactly I think it's a fair a fair speculation don't take it as gospel truth but you could basically break this down into um, outcomes for yourself for your school and for your society and do it on those three levels in order to help you give some kind of structure to what you're doing and then you're doing 80 to 100 words for each of those don't get bogged down here in the skills you developed or the new insights this is a big problem people say oh the outcome for me was that I had these new skills no you're gonna be asked about that in section C so keep your powder dry don't write about it here and then have to repeat yourself because you can't get marks twice you can also one of the things that get you around a bit of a problem in this area is that you can frame your project as being you, you realize it's a part of a broader movement you know you're not going to end climate change yourself or homelessness or whatever it happens to be but you can frame your your uh, your work as contributing a contributory factor towards addressing a much bigger problem within society that's perfectly fine you could also mention I haven't got it on the notes here but you could also mention things like anecdotally the participants in my focus group said such and such or my teacher uh, said that you know other teachers had been talking about it so you know I had raised awareness or whatever it happens to be so even if you haven't fully succeeded uh, and you've talked about that in your in your critical evaluation uh, you can say well you know it's a it's a slow process I am trying to push a big rock up a big big hill uh, and I'm part of this with other people that just leaves us to say uh, best of luck with the rest of the reports bearing in mind the marking scene can change but I think the marking of this section is pretty it was been, has been pretty good and it's actually been really encouraging to see just how much they've been rewarding you know solid critical evaluations of projects and it is very hard to bring about change and you should reflect that in your project and one of the things that's quite interesting is that you know it isn't actually the quality of your of your project that matter this is the quality of your report just because you did something amazing and had an amazing personal outcome or you know it, it really did bring about a change in society if you don't write that up well you won't get a good mark and the corollary of that of course is that you could do a kind of a trashy project it could be fairly simple it could you know not achieve its goals but if you write it up properly if you write a good report you can still get the overwhelming majority of the marks and as I say with all of these keep them from being generic and show personal engagement whenever you can the final thing then is to just remind you to to subscribe to the website for uh, updates on upcoming uh, screencasts and podcasts uh, I put a whole lot of work into making sure my students have a good stream of relevant articles and are keeping up to date keeping their finger on the pulse uh, at, at KH Palsock and if you're one of the teachers and you haven't already subscribed on Twitter to at Palsock Teachers which is the uh, Politics and Society Teachers Association page uh, on Twitter it, it's well worthwhile doing that best of luck with your section B's I'll see you again shortly for a video on section C